Recently, stem cells have received a lot of popular press as the next big thing in medicine. And truthfully, stem cells have significant potential to alter the way we treat disease and injury. Stem cells are so special because they can turn into many different types of cells and tissues. They can turn into heart cells, they can turn into lung cells, into brain cells, into liver cells. Really any type of tissue in your body, stem cells can turn into that type of tissue. Now in regards to musculoskeletal health, we're very interested in a special type of subset of stem cells called mesenchymal stem cells. And the following schematic illustrates why these types of stem cells are potentially so powerful. As the figure illustrates, mesenchymal stem cells have the potential to turn into a variety of important musculoskeletal cells, such as muscle cells, fat cells, bone cells, cartilage cells, and tendon cells. Thus, potentially, mesenchymal stem cells offer therapeutic solutions for a variety of diseases, such as osteoarthritis, joint deterioration, osteoporosis, bone loss, tendinopathy, chronic tendon degeneration, or sarcopenia, chronic muscle loss. As previously mentioned, stem cells have the ability, the unique ability, to form many different types of new cells and new tissues. This is a very salient property when you're, when you're trying to find a, 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 an effective treatment for chronic disease. Because in chronic disease, effectively the tissue no longer functions appropriately and it becomes aged and degenerated and decrepit and deteriorated and just not doing what it's supposed to do. Let's take a look at arthritis. So in osteoarthritis, cartilage cells have a very, very hard time of producing new cartilage that has the mechanical properties that the joint needs to provide optimal function. So theoretically, if you take stem cells and you inject it in the old joint, then it creates new healthy cartilage that allows the joint to have optimal mechanical properties. So you have less pain, you have less swelling, you have less stiffness. Additionally, when you're looking at these chronic diseases that have significant tissue damage, if you just add one healthy cell, it's not gonna make much of a difference. So the beauty about stem cells is, is that they can rapidly divide, rapidly expand and grow. So you take one stem cell and it can end up with hundreds or thousands of new healthy cells. It's a very important property. Finally, stem cells have been shown to have a positive effect on the immune system's reaction to chronic injury. Uh, a, a driving force in all types of chronic disease is chronic inflammation that's unrestrained, that actually causes more collateral damage than it does help injured tissue. And so stem cells can orchestrate and rebalance the immune system so it actually boosts the healing process as opposed to sabotaging the healing process. Stem cells are found throughout the body, and many different types of tissues contain stem cells. But there are certain sources of stem cells that have been used predominantly by the medical community, both for research and for treatment protocols. They include bone marrow, fat, and umbilical cord blood. Stem cells from bone marrow are usually harvested from the area of your pelvis referred to as the iliac crest. Stem cells from bone marrow are the best studied, and potential advantages of bone marrow derived stem cells are that they are easily harvested from your pelvis, so the individual who's actually performing the procedure has easy access. Additionally, since they're your own stem cells, you don't have to worry about any type of immune system rejection or, or interaction that causes destruction with the stem cells, like often occurs with organ transplants. Also, stem cells from bone marrow seem to show a preference for forming new bone cells, so they might be very useful in treatment of diseases involving bony injuries such as non-healing broken bones, osteoporosis, or osteoarthritis that involves significant amount of bone. A potential disadvantage of bone marrow derived stem cells is that depending on the age and overall health of the individual who's donating the stem cells, the stem cells harvested might not have much new growth or healing potential. Stem cells obtained from fat are frequently harvested from your belly or your buttocks. Potential advantages of fat-derived stem cells are for one, they have the added benefit of removing some excess unwanted fat from your body, since the harvesting process is very similar to liposuction. 
Additionally, like bone marrow derived stem cells, they are your own stem cells, so you don't have to worry about your immune system rejecting or destroying them. A potential disadvantage, similar to that of bone marrow stem cells, is that depending on the overall health and age of the individual who's donating stem cells, the stem cells might have limited new growth and regeneration potential. Stem cells harvested from umbilical cord blood are not the patient's own stem cells, so there is a much higher risk of your immune system rejecting some, if not all, of the stem cells and sabotaging the healing process. However, umbilical cord stem cells are so young and so vibrant that they have tremendous regenerative and healing potential. So how do you harvest the stem cells and then get the stem cells where you want them? In bone marrow harvesting, bone marrow is aspirated from the iliac crest region of your pelvis. The stem cells are then isolated via a centrifuge, which is a machine that is able to separate different components of bone marrow. The stem cells are then injected back into the body. In this example, it's injected into the hip joint via the femur, the thigh bone. In fat harvesting, fat is aspirated most commonly from the belly. The stem cells are then separated from fat and injected back into the body. In this example, stem cells are actually removed from the body and then placed in a test tube for expansion in the laboratory. The stem cells are then seated on a nutrient-containing scaffold and their external environment is manipulated to influence the type of cell they will mature into. For example, trying to influence a stem cell to become a new cartilage cell or a new bone cell or a new muscle cell. Then these cells are re-implanted into the body. While stem cells are potentially an amazing treatment option, we're still not there yet. And there's a lot of science that has to be teased and worked out until we figure out well, what's the best way to treat people with stem cells. I think the future direction of stem cell research will focus on, one, well, what's the best source of stem cells? Is it, is it from fat? Is it from the bone marrow? Is it the, from the blood of an umbilical cord? Or is it, is, it, is it stem cells that are in the cartilage or in synovium or in bone? We just don't know yet. We also don't know, well, how often should we be giving people stem cells and, and how many stem cells should we be giving? And we also have to figure out, do we need to include some type of scaffold so the stem cells go exactly where we want them to and so they promote healing in a very specific area. And hopefully, you know, there's a lot of smart people working on this stuff. In the near future, we'll have better solutions and better ideas and, and, and potentially stem cells can just be this miraculous treatment that really helps us manage chronic musculoskeletal disease.